Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there guys and girls, you delicious things. I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name's Mikey and welcome along to another episode of Draw With Mikey, episode 142. Uh, this is the super casual, unedited, rough round the edges midweek series. I'm feeling nice and relaxed. I'm just sipping some tea over here. Can you hear this? Grab yourself a mug, why not? Get yourself a coffee, whatever works for you. And for those of you not in the know, it's just my opportunity to share whatever artwork I happen to have been doing recently, whether it's good quality or just ruining stuff in the sketchbook, it really doesn't matter. Um, and maybe you guys are cracking on with your own projects, homework, or just things in the background and letting me ramble away. Uh, most important part is I get to see what you guys are up to. So if you've got any thoughts, feelings, feedback, anything you want to get off your chest, get your sweet self into the comment section below and with any luck, I'll be reading it next time around. Um, so yeah, any updates for this week? I am in the background of today's picture doing Tifa. Tifa gets you drunk or uh, Tifa offers you a treat. I haven't thought up a title yet, but basically um, this is one of my Patreon catch-up pieces uh, for April and I'm still doing the painty render method of my artwork. So instead of a clean animate method where I focus on the line work very heavily to be correct very early on, the painty render method is that I can just splosh down an idea, throw some color on top of it, get a very rough color thumbnail going, decide early on if I want to commit to it, and then just keep rendering through and moving things around and changing and experimenting at any stage of a painting until I find what I like. Basically constantly keeping my eyes all over the piece, trying not to unbalance the piece by overworking one area compared to another, trying to make sure the composition works, and uh, trying to keep things chunky and chonky. Although um, in my Mikey commentary version of these videos I kind of explain that in a bit more detail as to what I mean. And of course as this is the Patreon catch-up, there will be a load of delicious names on screen towards the end of the episode, but if you want to get your hands on Tifa and the other Final Fantasy VII girls, or just grab my tutorials work packs, of course this is available on patreon.com forward slash MikeyMegaMega. Don't worry, it's the only time I'll uh, rub it in your face. But I just want to go on to this topic to say a great big thank you to Nameless Crow, Danny S, Mighty Mega X, Brendan J, Marissa and Hamong Chi L, who are all some of the big guy hardcore crew tier right back in April itself. Thank you so much for your patience. Everything is on its way. Um, and in the last week's episode, I think uh, we were doing Red is Sus, Sus but Smexy. Um, so I'll just be reading through all of your comments to that particular video. I did ask you guys last week for your recommendations for the Final Fantasy titles in order, i.e. what are your favourite Final Fantasy games, but really... I'll take your recommendations for anything. Um, I just uh, basically put it in a notepad file and steal all your ideas. Oh, in fact, okay, that leads me to today's question, in fact. So, it kind of goes like this. Basically, um, I'm uh, Mikey's a big fan of stories, okay? I like a good anime and manga for the plot and the characters, and that's not a euphemism, I mean it. So... Um, I like Berserk and what's going on there in a relationship of right and wrong. I love how Hunter Hunter is like a subversive shonen trope anime that's really just going in its own direction and stuff matters. Um, all that kind of thing. And uh, because of that, and the fact that I draw a lot of spicy fan arts for a living, I tend to get a very particular type of recommendation sometimes from you guys. Sometimes it's really good. I, Mikey, I think I know what you like and it's going to be this. And I try it and I just go, wow, my eyes are opened. And there's the other type of anime recommendation I get from you guys. It goes something like, uh, oh, Mikey, I, uh, I think I know exactly what you'll like. It's called uh, Boob Diamond Unbreakable Fi Impact 5 The Bum Wars. Uh, I think you'll really like it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? And uh, that kind of sets off my alarm warning bells because basically it means um, it's a harem anime and it's got big titties and it's probably not actually an interesting or well-written or enjoyable thing. Uh, so I tend to actually take a lot of your recommendations uh, with a pinch of salt. However, the whole reason why I'm saying this, I'm not just trying to be mean to you guys, the reason why I'm bringing this up right now is because my question for you is a bit of a 180. I'm not interested in any anime recommendations right now that involve uh, really busty waifus or anything like that, but I am interested in some video game recommendations which might involve busty waifus, i.e. what video games or anime themed video games might I actually want to take a look at for the sake of some hot waifu fan art? And the reason why I'm asking this is because I've noticed everybody on the internet this week has started playing Genshin Impact. I'm 
I'm probably gonna <laughs> I'm probably gonna try that tonight. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's free to play on a PS4. Um, so. If you ever want to come say hi to me, I am probably live right now on twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega, live streaming either Deus Ex Human Revolution, because uh, we're doing some cyberpunk catch up before the new cyberpunk game comes out, or maybe I'm looking at all the waifu material and plot for Genshin Impact. So come say hi if you like things live. We do it all on Twitch. I love advertising Twitch because I, <laughs> I, I hate YouTube as a platform. I just love it because of you guys. Um, so yeah, that's for catch up from me. Nothing much else to report. Just working away catching up on patreon i hope you guys are doing well so get in the comment section let me know and uh yeah what other video games um are waifu heavy like you know what where does mikey need to be sourcing his next fan arts um rob e in the comment section so i'm guys i'm mixing up the order of the comments as ever to try to catch as many new people as possible rob e says ah Okay, thank you very much. And Joshua Mangubat says, more male character manga tutorials, please. Mm, Joshua, so I do have um, a couple male manga tutorials that do need to be uh, produced. There's some ideas there. They're still heavily female orientated, not necessarily gender specific, um, but there are a few more sort of female stuff that needs to be out there, which I think is just going to be a bit more immediately useful. You guys keep crying for tutorials on different facial expressions, uh, tutorials on... Um, exactly how I'm using line weight and where for any composition, um, how to get like good natural gesture and flow into your figures. We've got plenty to do and I will be kind of keeping that a bit lady orientated. You know my vibe. But yes, men are never off the table. Oh, hello, doctor. Um, it's just that uh, I kind of specialize in what my skills are. Uh, Namako says uh, the best defense is that I'm not an imposter because I'm too thick to go through the vents. Indeed. So um, I think a lot of the comments are probably going to be related to Among Us. It took the internet by storm. And uh, the fan art that we did last week, which was just a really derpy image. Uh, this Tifa one is a bit more of a, a longer process uh, compared to the one we did last time. But uh, knowing the internet, it's always the quick ones that are more popular. Um, Ayushi Artinity says, uh, Yahaloo, Mikey-san. <laughs> wow, what the... Yahaloo to you too. I've never heard that word in my life. Um, have you seen this new game called Genshin Impact? Oh, well, here you go. I was literally just talking about this. Um, it's an anime style gacha like Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it's so good. It has so many waifus too. And to top it off, it's free. And the soundtrack is fire. It's trendy, so you should check it out. My favorite of a bunch is Fish. Ooh, ooh. Okay, well, you made me shudder inside for the ooh, ooh, but thank you very much. And yeah, do you know what? Ayushi, you've literally just um, covered everything that I know about Genshin Impact is that it is a waifu-heavy gacha game RPG, but it has Zelda Breath of the Wild bright aesthetics. I uh, I spoke to a live streamer and asked for their opinion because they've been playing it for a couple days. And in their opinion, now I don't necessarily believe this, I think they're chatting, but in their opinion, they were just like, oh, it's even more fun than Breath of the Wild. That's a big shout. Now, Breath of the Wild has a certain long playability. I don't know if Genshin will, but I'm more than happy to investigate for science reasons. Uh, Six Feet says, I didn't know red was thick as fuck. Yeah, indeed. Red is a little bit juicy. And Maximus Art and Game says, Hey Mikey. Hello there, Maximus. I have a drawing suggestion. Okay. You should draw G. Lados from the Portal games, but as a sexy woman. And for the reason that I play most video games, it's because of the challenges that come with it. You're amazing. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you for the kind words. Yeah. So um, before I was asking you guys for your opinions on what were the best Final Fantasy video games titles in that series? I was also asking you about what keeps you engaged in video games. Like, are you playing video games just for the waifus, just for the mechanics, just for the story, or a mixture of all these different things? The plot, the character development, etc. Do let me know. And uh, Jaxi says, uh, why did I cancel my Patreon? I've got financial issues. Oh, Jaxi, don't worry about it. Much love to anybody who pops into my Patreon, especially um, because... A lot of you guys just come in for the tutorials work packs and it's just a dollar. So you go in, you drop a dollar and you get the entire set of everything that I've done. And that's absolutely fine. That is literally why I have it there. So uh, never think that you have to stay. And thank you for any support. It's no big deal. Look after yourselves firstly. Uh, Happensmaker says, uh, well, I'm going to make a list of all of my recent comments and on which episode I posted them with slight modifications to match time. Uh, so the longer that Mikey doesn't read my comment, the longer the list will get. Oh, no. OK, well, I'm glad I'm here. Holy shit. OK, I've just expanded this. Uh, DWMs 136 to 137, 138, 139, 140 and 141. Habens maker, consider yourself got, but I'm going to do a lot of skimming over all of this because I'm not going to sit here for an entire session. I want to catch as many of you guys as possible. 
So, you also want me to do a Helltaker fan art. Understood. I understand that Helltaker is for one where it's some kind of puzzle game, but it's got some uh, really good Cerberus uh, characters where it's like three white-haired ladies or something. And there's another one in there that's definitely worth drawing. Thank you very much. Um, as for an emotional game recommendation, I'm skimming through. You recommend Valiant Hearts for Great War. It's a WW1 puzzle game with wholesome and heartfelt moments. Hmm. Okay. Uh, play it yourself to get the whole experience. Don't watch any compilations or anything. Um, okay, excellent. I'll okay. I'm going to copy and paste all of this after I've done reading it. Uh, anime recommendations: uh, Monodachi Tachi ga Isekai Karakuru Sou Desu yo. Red. Um, it's one of the earlier Isekai animes. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, they have to um, get their rank and prosperity back. The story is pretty cool and takes inspiration of different mythological and historical events like Perseus and the Black Pest. Hmm, okay. And uh, DWM140, you're just saying that what keeps me investigated, invested in video games is the challenge aspect. For example, I play SnowRunner, which is uh, pretty much all of late. It's an off-road simulation game. Uh, you go through mud and water. I've actually seen Limmy play that, of all people. Limmy, I'm pretty sure. And uh, you have to get your truck through wooden bridges. Yeah, so basically it's any of those um, videos where your heart's in your mouth, where you see like someone in a like a, like a trucking company in the middle of a terrible road in like uh, just leading up to Pakistan or something has to turn around the world's longest truck on a world's smallest stretch of road, which is like 100 feet up on a mountainside. Yeah, I know those vibes. And um, Mikey, you also jumped on the Among Us train, but you missed the Hell Taker train. Uh, Helltaker has all the waifu material. Okay, guys, so, so far from all of you people, we've got Genshin Impact and Helltaker for waifus. Thank you very much. And also the Henry Stickman Collection. Uh, oh, the same publisher as the Henry Stickman Collection. I don't even know what or who that is, but thank you very much. And uh, check it out. Okay, and also work out. Okay, thank you very much. Happens Maker, I have summarized the world's longest comment and paragraph. Guys, try to... Try to keep your comments to me under 500 words. Basically, if you could legally submit it as a dissertation on a university course, it's probably too long for my chat. But thank you very much, Happens Maker. Consider us caught up. Um, uh, Mushfik Scorpion says, How can I draw female characters bending over or bending forward? Uh, dude, just think about where people are actually bending. Are they bending at the waist? Are they leaning over from the back? Are they bending at the knees? And uh, what angle are you reaching for these things? There's going to be all sorts of shapes and all sorts of foreshortening. So make sure that you've got the basic building blocks of anatomy. You don't have to know all the muscle groups. Just know the vague shapes that they're going to form and be able to kind of sketch them out at different angles. Come on, come on. It's all there in the basics. Uh, Misa Poop Poop says, I'm drinking myself a little bit of raspberry hibiscus tea whilst taking a break designing from game concept stuff after staying up for most of the night oh my god dude yeah that whole staying up all night long kind of uh, life i'm afraid I, I know that a little bit too well um, however i'm trying to actually get things sorted out that being said again if you are listening to this dwm on a wednesday i'm probably live on twitch right now playing Genshin Impact or Deus Ex. I probably haven't gone to bed, so come say hi. Um, but dude, I hope your game game concept stuff is going as well as possible. Video game concept art blows my mind. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, I've just... I was just about to talk about... Um, Guys, I was just about to talk about how I really uh, like a lot of video game concept art books, um, but how some of the most disappointing things you can ever get is when you buy the concept art to a film... Uh, and you're just like expecting loads of amazing designs and artwork that never made it in. And then you open a book and a book's just full of endless bloody two page spreads of just high res photography from the movie. And you're just like, bitch, this is not concept art. You've wasted 20 percent of this book already on just filling up the pages with single page photographs. I expect behind the scenes concept designs. Oh, that really gets to me. Anyway, the reason why I just gasped is because I've just remembered something else which you guys on Twitch are already aware of. And I'll just I'll just share with you guys uh, who are listening in on YouTube. So guys, basically, I'm a bad person. I try not to be. I try to live my life and be good and, you know, respectful and woke and all, all the things. You know what I mean? <sighs> so... I, uh, a couple of years ago, reviewed a few uh, tablets, surprise, surprise, um, from a company called Gaomon. And uh, I had a contact there who was a very friendly lady over in China. And uh, I helped her with a few things. I mean, just a bit of trouble sh troubleshooting on a website, just a little, little bit outside of what I usually do. But she was very friendly and I didn't mind. It didn't take me a minute or two. Anyway, 
Uh, never thought anything of it. Uh, come Christmas two years ago, I got sent another tablet from Gaumon. And now from time to time, tablet companies will send me like the tablet that they want me to review. And they might follow up by sending me the odd other product. And it's usually, you know, a little bit of a thank you, but also it's kind of in the hopes that I might just make another video and review it. So I always kind of take that stuff with a pinch of salt. So Galmon sent me another tablet in Christmas and I never opened it because I was just like, oh, OK, it's another tablet. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, because they're like, I've just sent you a gift. And I'm just like, I know what gift means. Gift means I hope you do a tablet review for free. So I thought absolutely nothing of it. Now, on Twitch, we often do monthly tablet giveaways because I, I have a backlog of tablets. <laughs> That's such a weird flex. Um, so if you're subscribed to me on Twitch, we do like a raffle at the end of the month usually and somebody wins for tablet worldwide. It's just my way of kind of chucking it back out there. So I was looking for a tablet um, and I picked up this old Galmon one for a couple years ago and I was just like, okay, great, guys, we're going to give away this Galmon WH850 uh, drawing tablet. Here we go. Um, and I'd, I was on stream and I was peeling it out of a plastic. I'd never opened it before and I thought nothing of it. And then I went to take a photograph of the tablet to do like a Twitter post. Oh, in fact, I'll do a Twitter post of the actual tablet we're doing. Let me get back to that. So I went to take a photo and I was just picking up the box and I was like, huh. This box feels a bit heavy for a tablet. And I opened it up and inside, I shit you not, was not a tablet. Inside was a Christmas package gift hand put together from my contact at Galmon who I'd never responded to. So there was like, oh man, I felt so bad. There was like... There was a handwritten heartfelt letter for helping her with some stuff at work and it's great to get to know you and blah, blah, blah. And then she, she'd obviously like put loads of thought into it because there was these two different like um, art books by a range of different Chinese artists doing this amazing like wuxia pian style um, watercolour artwork and stuff and some like colouring pencils and other things. And this lady, <laughs> this lady had sent me an entire heartfelt Christmas gift pack which I had assumed was just another tablet. I hadn't opened it. This was two years ago. And I vaguely remember, because we, we kept in touch on WhatsApp, and at one point she was just like, oh, Mikey, did you receive um, Did you see the other box at Christmas? And because I just thought it was a tablet, I was just like, yep. <laughs> it, was, it was a heartfelt Christmas gift with a letter, a handwritten letter. Oh, man. So I'm a really, I'm a really bad person. I just want to share how guilty that I am. So yeah, I've got some brand new art books on my shelf in the background. Oh my God, I'd had it for two years. She must have just thought, ah, oh, what a prick, what a prick. I put all this time and all I get is a yep. Oh my God. So um, word of advice to anyone, never assume what's in a box that gets posted to you. You might actually want to open it. So I need to see if I can get in touch with her and just be like, oh, hey, long time, long time, no chat. Funny story. <laughs> oh my god. So okay guys, I'm gonna set up a PO box soon so that you guys can send me stuff because uh the current method really, really isn't working. Oh, I'm so sorry guys, I digressed. I just wanted to share with you why I am a terrible person and I'm carrying a lot of emotional guilt right now. Oh man, imagine putting all that time and effort and sending me gifts and art books, mate. And then I just cold <laughs> just cold shouldered. <laughs> I didn't know I had it in me. Oh no! Okay, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. Uh, Misaki May says, Mikey, uh, please draw falling possessions. Um, wait, like... F wait, is that, a, is that a really weird translation for Sora no Otoshimono? It fell from the sky. Um, and which it could be from the front. I mean, the face is looking far ahead as if you were pushing someone out of a building. Those possession. I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain what I really mean. Yeah, because I, I really love you. You helped me a lot like no one did before. Hey, that's really kind of you to say, Mizaki. I don't massively understand what you mean. Pushing someone out of a building, like those possessions. What? What? Misaki, try again. Seriously, try again. I, I do want to help. Um, Bob Onikosi says, uh, Mikey, trying to remember the audio company he hates. Oh, Oh my god, yeah, yeah, deity microphones. Uh, me, go Mikey's brain, you can do it! <laughs> yeah, I was really struggling to make the two brain cells in my head connect in the last episode towards the end. Uh, go Mikey's brain, you can do it! Go banana! Uh, the Shadow King says, uh, worst case scenario, all of the crewmates start simping. Oh yes, you know, red is sexy but smus. And... Uh, Unafi uh, Mabengi says, Mikey, could you draw the alien from Stranger Things? 
Oh, do you mean the Demi-Gorgon uh, from the first series? And do you mean sexy Demi-Gorgon? Mm, that's, that's a bit risky, isn't it? Uh, I could do sexy older 11, maybe. How old's that actress? Oh, shit, am I going to prison just for saying that? Uh, Datamaru TM says, Oh, my God, I am, I am. Because that's the actress who it turns out... Oh, my, oh my God, this is one of my favourite things. Do you guys remember, and for reals, just YouTube it, do you guys remember when the actress from Stranger Things was at, like, a, a screening for a movie or something, and she was getting interviewed, and then she just, like, the interviewer is just like, oh, and I hear that you happen to be friends with, uh, it's Blake, isn't it? You know, the rap man, Blake. Uh, wait, is that his name? One sec, you know, he's in the meme. Blake, rapper? No, not Blake. Who's the guy? Who's the other rap man? This guy. Drake! I apologise to everybody. I apologise. So um, the interviewer was just like, oh, I hear your friends with Drake. And she was just like, yeah, we're such good friends. He's always texting me. You know, we're always talking about stuff and life and he's always keeping in touch. And, you know, we love each other. And he's always saying, I love you. You can do it. And I remember, <laughs> I remember the look on everybody's face. And it was probably the look of every single person who was watching the video. It was just like... Oh, he is, is he? <laughs> this, and this actress was like, what, 14? I've got no idea. And everybody on the internet is just like, oh, he's texting you a lot, is he? Oh, really? That's very good to know. And I bet when that video came out, Drake must have just been watching it, just like, no, 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 no. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Anyway, so everybody's got hit, everyone's got their eyes on uh, everyone else. And I'm sure it's completely legitimate. I'm sure it's just people working in the highest levels of media and film and television supporting each other. But also, you know, maybe it's not a million miles away from that whole grooming boat that people like to get on from time to time. Man, that made me laugh. Oh, guys, I've... I have no idea why I'm talking about that, by the way. We've just gone completely off topic. Um, anyway, uh, Datamadu TM. So... Can somebody please explain to me if Mikey is making any money from his channel or no? Because it's uh, busty figures and they don't want him showing off. Uh, if that's a thing, it's pretty stupid. It's not like they're full on nude. Datamaru, that's basically it. YouTube likes to be this homogenized, um, happy for all ages, middle of a row, Jimmy Kimmel show kind of thing now. Um, and it's trying to forget its past where it used to just allow a lot more interesting content. And therefore, yeah, if you don't fall into line, they demonetize you and kill your videos. I complain about this a lot, so I won't go on a big rant today. Um, but that is the basics of it. It's always hit or miss whether or not any of my videos are going to be monetized. So why do you do this? Well, because I really like touching bases with you guys, actually. Um, I don't just do it for the money, thank God, because I'm not making any. Uh, and the only reason that I feed myself and can support all of this is because people support me through Patreon. I just make YouTube content because I still enjoy doing that sort of thing with you. I'm certainly not doing it because of YouTube. I'm doing it despite YouTube. Let me sip some tea before I get angry. Um... And uh, uh, Loser Hoppet Svey says, uh, Mikey, hi. Hello there. I'm a, uh, I'm about to, I'm about to flip my barger here. Wait, what? Well, you've spelled that really weirdly. Anyway, She-Ra is a fictional superhero in the 1985 filmation series, She-Ra and the Princess of Power. Okay, thank you. We were talking about doing some She-Ra stuff earlier and I couldn't get um, my head around whether she existed or if she was a character from something else and I was making up. Uh, He-Man and She-Ra are twins, and it's a reboot. She-Ra and the Princess of Power from 2018. Um, oh, my name is spelled in my negative uh, language, which is Sweden, and the name of She-Ra's guardian name. Oh, I say, I see. Okay, so um, most of that explains the spelling. Uh, hey, du det till? Ja, förstår du lite svenska? Um, okay, much love to all of you Swedish people. And Randall Lowe says, uh, Mikey, hands down, the best Final Fantasies are... Okay, I'm all ears. One, Final Fantasy VI. The main characters have fantastic depth, but the fact that the side characters have amazingly deep stories like Shadow is also wonderful. I agree. I don't know if I'd put it at number one, but I agree that I love it. It's charming and fun, as well as really pushing the SNES to do lots of stuff. So... Six is always worth playing in my book. Uh, Chrono Trigger. I know it's not a Final Fantasy, but um, it's fucking awesome. I actually count Chrono Trigger. Whenever I say I want to do a Final Fantasy playthrough, starting, ironically, from six and working my way through, it always includes Chrono Trigger before seven. Uh, maybe Crisis Core? I remember Crisis Core. I've got to be real here. I remember Crisis Core not being very good. 
but I feel like if I'm going to do an old school playthrough of those video games, then I might as well before I do Final Fantasy VII, who knows? Uh, you've also said Final Fantasy XII, for auto battle setup stuff, uh, was a lot of fun to manage. I agree. And the story was fairly interesting. <laughs> the world was fairly interesting. Uh, the design was fairly interesting. The story for the characters, we've talked about this before. I uh, barely remember any of them. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, it's not my favourite at all, but I do respect the willingness to pull something like the Aerith twist. Uh, oh, and that's it, just your top five. That's brilliant, Randall. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if I'd share the order, but I agree with your reasoning. And uh, Honey T says, Me sees for thick red imposter and clicks. Me sees for hands. <laughs> Why, though? Oh, yeah. I think um I think the red is sus fan art that I did last time probably had like slightly derpy short arms. I was both trying to keep the feeling of being a bean and not putting too much detail in, whilst also trying to have like some slim hip to thigh ratio as well. It's a tough mix getting the bean and the sexy. Although beans can be very sexy, never never doubt, never doubt. Uh, the original Feari says Final Fantasy VII is the absolute goat for me. I agree. And Mali Koga says, hey, can you share your brush files for Photoshop? Because I want to draw two, but I can't find a great brush set. So it'd be amazing if you can help me. Mali Koga. Uh, yeah, all my... So bear in mind, I'm a very simple man and too much choice is a negative impact on me making progress. So I use like seven, six or seven brushes in Photoshop. Most of them are basic. Um, but I've got a drawing tutorial, which is um, the very first thing in Photoshop. Clean lines, page setup, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's in my Photoshop clean lines tutorial how to use stuff thing. Basically, there's a what I'm getting at is there's a download link. And yeah, you can download my brushes. They're, they're all available. You've just got to go to a, the particular tutorial which talks about starting on Photoshop. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bra Moment says, Carpenter Brute? Question mark. I don't know what the question is, but I do agree. Carpenter Brute is excellent, aggressive electronic uh, music. Absolute powerhouse. And Beppo Slime says, uh, please don't always draw sexualized women. Beppo Slime, please don't tell me what to do. And also, because of your comment, I'm going to make sure that the next woman I do is more sexualized than ever before. But thank you very much for trying to, you know, have an opinion and make, make it somehow my problem. Uh, Red says, stop, no, too late, Red is sus, stop your jobs, emergency meeting, and uh, the Hatter 3 says, I know that you're sick of this question, but what tablet are you using? Oh no, that's a fine question, dude, Um, because it changes all the time based on what I'm reviewing. Uh, this Tifa fan art right here was done on the XP Pen Artist Pro 24, it's their nice 2K tablet, it's one of their flagships, and... Um, I'm going to be real, I cannot wait to pack it away and review the next Huion tablet. And the reason why is that XP Pen tablet was absolutely great to use. It felt lovely, the tech was great, the experience was great, the buttons and the wheels are great. But it's got a very limited range of Adobe RBG and it's very low saturation. So all the artwork I was doing on there felt very low saturation to me. And if I started to look at it on another screen or whilst I'm live streaming it, everything that people are seeing on my live stream is really bright and full of vivid colors. And I'm not even aware that those colors are so vivid and bright when I'm doing it because the screen I'm actually looking at, the tablet itself, um, is just so grayed out by comparison. So um, although it was very nice to use, it was actually killing my um, sense of security in my own artwork and I was constantly having to double check it on other monitors. That is not a healthy way to get a lot of art done and be happy. You don't want to do an art piece, upload it to Instagram, check it on your phone and realize it looks completely different. Um, so, oh yeah, they do a great tablet, but... I, uh, I, uh, it's been really pissing me off. Um, <laughs> I'm really not sure how deeply I can recommend it. So, um, I still recommend my Huey on Canvas Pro 20. They've got a 2019 version. Um, it's a workhorse. I absolutely loved it. It's only a 1080p tablet, but I'm going to go back to the latest Huey on 1080p, do a review for them, and I'll let you know what I think of that tablet as well. Um, so, no, absolutely fine question. Uh, SHSL TikToker said, I'm scared. Why did this video appear when I searched up sus? Ah, that's the power of hashtags. Welcome on in. Good to see you. And CNAO says, hello, Mikey. Hello, Bessie. I'm working on making a character in 12 anime styles. I'm intent to do a video. It's quite a challenging exercise, but it's very cool. Hey, man. Good for you. I've seen quite a few of them, like uh, drawing Naruto in different manga styles, drawing my OC in different manga styles. One sec. 
Seems great. It's exactly the kind of content I won't bother making. And uh, Nagatoro says, yo, that thumbnail is cursed. Yeah, it is, but it's too late. You've seen it. And even worse, you liked it. Um, Pop and Nickel Red Rum says, uh, imagine him drawing Shovel Knight fan art. Oh, do you know what? Shovel Knight's something that um, has been recommended to me a number of times, including on this series. I'm just adding it in. But um, I can't... I've, that's also got a very simple design. I think one of the bosses in Shovel Knight might be a giant spider, which is kind of why I haven't picked it up yet. And then someone told me that there's a giant spider boss in one of the Ori and the Blind Forest games. So I'm kind of... Uh, might you be hesitating, basically? You know how I like these things. Um, uh, Jay says, uh, Mikey, I love the Aerith work, and since you're on part four of JoJo's, oh shit, yeah, 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 um, whenever you get the chance, try Lisa Lisa or someone from part three, maybe you, Kako. Man, Jay, Strug Life, absolutely dude. Oh, in fact, I've finally started watching and continuing, uh, JoJo's and Bizarre Adventure, uh, part four, so thank you very much for nudges, guys. I realised as we were doing the DWMs, I hadn't actually watched another episode in ages, so in part four, I've just done the bit where, um... They realise that there's a mass murderer in the town. They found the ghost of the first girl and her dog that lived by the Mystery Street, um, which is really interesting. And it's kind of like held back off of that. And we've just done the other thing where this guy's, this little kid's got a stand who's like, he's got a spiky head. He's like a little cannonball person. His stand is um, like designed to run around town and pick up loose drop change. And so they go through the big like, um, lottery ticket winning scam and all that sort of stuff to make a whole load of money so I've just been watching that and it's still continuing the vibe a lot of you guys get in the comments and you're just like oh Mikey doesn't know yet but trust me Dio makes his presence felt we are not done um, but I'm still just in the stage of part four where we're just watching these you know one or two part episodes where it's just a bunch of school kids just dossing around the place who happen to also sometimes fight with their stand users so yeah it's all good it's all fun I'm still very much enjoying it it's still very much uh, the JoJo's part four theme of a bit more slice of life while still being bizarre JoJo. Mm. <clears throat> okay, uh, Stephen Hernandez says, true lad. Oh, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, lad, right back at you. And <laughs> Ninja Trouble just says in capital letters, delete this. Too late, dude. Too late. It's all been seen. Uh, Denki Den says, hey Mikey, hello there Denki, may I use your smexy red imposter design for my art? I really like how you drawn it, it would like to draw some illustrations of it. If you want to make a study of my work, you don't need my permission, you don't need someone's permission to do a study of their artwork, it's just if you start posting it socially without crediting the fact that it was a study or you try to pass it off as your own work, which is where people start to get rubbed the wrong way. But no, if you want to draw something, draw it. I um, If I look up to somebody's work or it really blows my mind or motivates me, I might sit down and try to do a study of it anytime. I just need to be super, super clear that it's not my original content. And ideally, if possible, link back to the original artist and give them a shout out. Uh, I'm a dork says, why do you only draw girls? Um, I draw a lot of girls too, but why? Easy, they're much more nice to look at. And Ariku Owo says, I'm pretty confused about the length of the arms. <laughs> okay, yeah, did you notice as well? Yeah, the uh, the red sus but sexy, yeah, the, uh, the arms were definitely a little bit too short. Um, KL Cassidy says, uh, uh, did I just see some Spaceman titty? Yes, you did. And uh, I Make Stuff says, uh, honestly, Mikey, I never thought I'd be able to draw the human bodies correct regarding posture, perspective, and foreshortening. But here I am, sketching poses uh, which I thought were well out of my reach, purely from memory and imagination, I might add, using the guidelines you taught. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Oh, no. Hey, dude, you're welcome. Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, 0.5 or 0.7 millimeter cheap mechanical pencils are great, but I love the way the 0.3 gives me a much finer touch and level of detail. Hey, go for it. Whatever works. Tell me all about your tools. Yeah, no. Hey, thank you very much for the kind words I make stuff. Um, as I've kind of said before, um, we are all just different artists on the journey trying to find our own style, trying to get better and, ch you know, address challenges and not not kind of plateau, but keep growing and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just sharing the what little I know. And I know a bit of basics. It's not like I came up with the building blocks technique or anything like that. But if those videos help you get into your own artwork, that makes me a happy chap. Indeed, I'm just here to try to get you guys to start some drawing and pick up the pencil. So I always love hearing that sort of stuff. Thank you very much. Um, AS, ASDF ASDF says, uh, those diary entries and notes are a pet peeve of mine. Their existence never makes much sense when you stop and think about it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I think we were talking about last week. Um, 
when a video game is quite good, you can either choose to just do the game, like you can choose to just play Resident Evil 2 and enjoy it, or you can choose to take an extra moment and read all of the extra information and get a slightly fuller, richer picture. You're not really losing out too much by doing one or the other, but you get rewarded for taking that extra time. And uh, in Resident Evil 2, that's very much in the form of diaries and so on. So it doesn't work for you, um, ASD. It certainly doesn't make sense that um, people would write a regular daily journal entry as they're turning into a zombie and stuff like that. Like... At one point, the diary entry is just like, brains, I must eat brains, or something almost like that. And you're just like, eh, I don't think the zombie would bother picking up the pencil at that stage and just adding in another entry. But um, equally, I like, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's really engaging. And I think it helps just give you that insight. I mean, there's loads of other ways. Like, I noticed in Spider-Man on the PS4, guys, I have just completed the last part of the DLC from the beginning uh, right to the end, including the uh, free DLC story arcs, Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man on a PS4 is a hell of a game. Really loved it, really enjoyed it. Silver Sable, oh, guys, we need to do some fan art of Silver Sable from the PS4 game and some fan art of Black Cat from the PS4 game. Her hips and thighs would not quit. <laughs> the entire DLC blew me away. If anything, it reminded me I need to get out of the house and actually meet someone. But whilst I'm being a stuck-in during these troubling COVID times, uh, mate, Hot Black Cat fan art is going to be coming our way sooner than later. But it is Spooktober. We're doing a tablet giveaway live on Twitch. Make sure you're subbed and follow me on there. I'm probably live right now playing video games, as I said before. Come say hello. Um, but also, it kind of means we need to do some spooky fan arts. Now, we've got one more Final Fantasy VII Girl to get done over the upcoming week. So this week and a little bit of the beginning of next week. Um, so I'll probably be done with the Patreon stuff this time next week, so to speak. We've got to do Jesse. And then straight after that, I'm either going to be doing Genshin Impact waifus or diving into maybe like, you know, the Hammer Horror Ladies, like uh, um, Vampire Chan, uh, Mummy Chan, Zombie Chan, Franken Chan. Um, I'm making these up, but I'm pretty sure they all probably exist if I Google them. Uh, so yeah, we've got plenty to do, plenty of delicious and spooky things to uh, set our teeth into. <clears throat> Uh, Katanaga Edge, oh, Katana Edge, there we go, hello there, says, I want to recommend a rather new anime or manga called Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. It's really good with amazing waifus and monster girls. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's 50-50. It's about a guy called Peter Grill who wins a tournament that makes him the strongest man in existence and he marries the girl he's always had a crush on. Yeah, so this sounds like exactly the kind of waifu harem stuff I don't usually get into. Uh, but all the monster girls that come in want him to give them a kid that's going to be the strongest generation of their species. <laughs> okay, I think I've got the picture. I will take your suggestion. Now I'm not I'm not saying no because I definitely want you guys to suggest stuff like this in video games as well. So we'll take it. I am keeping an eye out for those waifus. And um, but can he resist the monster girl waifus and stay loyal to his wife? Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's a little bit intriguing. Okay. No, thank you very much for the recommendation. I don't want to shit on anything that you guys say to me. Thank you, thank you. Um and Siege 10 says, this whole suspect thing has gotten old so fucking fast. Are you 12? <laughs> no, I'm like, a, I'm like a grown man. I'm actually um, 35, which is too old to be doing this sus fan art as well. Um, so I'm the wrong end of the age scale. I'm equally as far out as I shouldn't be, but uh, not from the young end, from the older one. But thank you very much for getting involved. Uh, Speed Dupo says, hey, Mikey, love your work. Hey, Speed, thanks for saying. I wanted to ask if you could please make a step-by-step -step playlist about learning how to draw anime. Yeah, it's my tutorials playlist. I've been using your current one for a couple of weeks, and there's so many videos in a random order. Oh yeah, actually, that's that's true. I kind of mix up the topics so that it stays fresh. But I'm getting confused, and I don't know if I started on the right one and what I should learn and do next. So can you please, please have time to create an order that's easy to follow? That is an absolutely fair question. Okay, fair deals. I'll come back round to that one. Okay, great shout. And um, let me just scroll down here. I'm just scrolling past a endless world of comments, which are all uh, people saying red is thick, red is sus, red is thick and sus. Thank you very much, guys. I hope Rule 34 artists are all taking notes. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. And uh, Social Caterpillar says, I just finished for Crystal Gems from Steven Universe, and I'm starting my first piece of Inktober. Guys, what are you working on? If you lovely people are in the background right now getting your own things done and whilst you're cracking away and letting Mikey ramble along to your ears, then uh, what are your projects? Is it art stuff? Is it homework? Is it just whatever kind of projects you need to bust out? Or are you just taking a cheeky hour out of your lives to enjoy a lovely cup of tea? Um, yeah. 
Steven Universe. I've seen people do Steven Universe fan arts as well. There's so many of these. Is this on Cartoon Network or is it like a like a YouTube series, this animation Steven Universe? I see a lot of these types of things where there's definitely like waifu material in there, but I never quite get to it. And I think the best fan arts of that sort of thing, like the Steven Universe girls, have been done by artists who don't do necessarily like pin-up art, but just beautiful artwork, and um, have really made some of those characters their own. So yeah, I will come back to that sometime. Um, Jusko says, Mikey, hello Jusko, I want to thank you for getting me into drawing again. Ah, oh, no, you're welcome, you're welcome. I love to sit down and draw something with you in the background. It also helps me with anger management. <laughs> oh no, I'll be angry on your behalf. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for the kind words. Yeah, I hope it's something for you to vibe out to. And, um... Uh, Phil Gamer says, I've got to admit, that was pretty sus and smexy. Yeah, yeah. But by the way, guys, thank you all very much. I'm skipping a shed load of comments as I'm scrolling through. I've put all of your um, comments in a random order, and I'm working from the bottom up just to make sure that I'm really kind of not speaking just to the same people every single time. But um, a load of them are very short, easy to glance at comments, which are just basically saying, it's really sexy, it's really sus and sexy, it's sus and smexy, well done, you made me fancy red. Thank you very much, you guys are absolute stars. Uh, Faddy Faddy says, oh my god, I miss the old intro so much. Dude, so do I. So do I, man. So I used to have the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, intro to this series. And I'm not going to go through the spiel. Most of you guys have heard me moan about this before. Long story short, it gets copyright striked every single week. I then have to challenge it. Uh, the challenge gets stopped. And then I have to do another challenge process, which basically can take up to two months. I shit you not. Up to two months before um, the video is released and I actually get like the money for it. I had an interesting conversation with the web chat of YouTube help. Um, where basically, say um, I've got... Now, I'll try to keep this quick because I know it's really boring. Say I make a Draw of Mikey video... Uh, I make it in June, and then um, it gets challenged, blah, blah, blah. All the money gets held by YouTube, and then by August, um, I fi it finally gets released, and I should get paid. The way it actually works is two months later, after I've gone through the challenge pro process, I don't see how much that video has been earning whilst it's been challenged. I have to wait up to another month or two, so up to October... Um, from a July video, I can then see the money that it should have earned. However, what's amazing is that those earnings appear back when they were on the video, i.e. Um, in June it actually made this much money. Now the only difference was, is back in June I wasn't getting that money, it wasn't getting paid to me. So um, by October I can finally see that, oh, this video earned X amount of money in June, and it's not much, we're talking like $10, $20 here. Um, this video earned X amount of money back in June, well done. Uh, so I got in touch with YouTube and I was like, okay, but um, obviously I didn't get paid that money in June because at the time it didn't exist as far as you were concerned. When does that money get paid to me? And they were basically just like, we can't tell. You have no way of confirming if a video gets um, caught in a dispute process and YouTube holds that money, they will posthumously add in what the figure was, but they don't have a way of me being able to see when that amount actually got or gets paid to me and because of that it was like the final nail in the coffin because this is a weekly series so I'm doing that dispute process four times a month um, to eventually see what it might have earned without being able to confirm that YouTube were even actually paying it to me into my AdSense yeah no thanks no thanks plus the fact that um, when you challenge three of these ones together, you're actually at risk of having your account terminated, which is brilliant because I have to do four in any one go. And because it takes two months, um, that means I can easily have eight of these challenges all floating up in the air, all threatening to terminate my account because YouTube is a nightmare platform to actually work on as a creator using stuff as fair use. Thank you so much, YouTube. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. I love you guys for w listening along, watching along, hanging out. I love touching bases with you people, the viewers. I hate this platform. <laughs> I hate it. Come hang out with me on Twitch. Anyway, uh, basically, thank you very much for reminding me. But yeah, that's why we're not using the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure intro. I need to make and record a fresh intro soon. Seeing as we're entering like a, you know, a fresh new season five of Mikey Mega Mega, we're going to put something else in the beginning of the video. I just need to kind of, you know, think something up and get around to it, basically. I'm just so busy doing all the Patreon art. Anyway, uh, Despacito Man 42 says, The only person, or the only sexy person I see in that video is the handsome man in the top right corner. Ooh! 
You do charm me, good sir. Why, thank you very much for saying. And uh, Vivacious Alice says, Hi, I'm Mikey. Hello there, Vivacious. I'm just here to let you know that you're doing a great job and you deserve all the good things in the world. Holy shit, thank you so much for saying. Uh, also, I finally started watching JoJo's and oh my god, the moment when the pillar men wake up, Mezamete! Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's so good. Um, when they wake up, the awesome music starts. It's absolute fire. This was exactly how you said it was the rush, the excitement, the energy. Yeah, that's why I stand so hard for season two, JoJo's. Anyway, I'm done rambling. I hope life is treating you well. I hope life is treating you well, Vivacious Alice. I see you all the time commenting on my other channel, Mega Mega 2, where all of the uh, live streaming stuff goes in. You're an absolute star. Um... Let me just scroll down here. Ryan Hack says, Firstly, loud happiness noises for the return of King Mikey. Oh, why? Thank you very much for saying, dude. And secondly, I've got a question. Uh, whether I, Whenever I try to do a character art, or any art to be honest, the rough art looks moderately good, but the final line art sucks like hell. Uh, they look boring and not dynamic at all. What should I do to improve my lines to make them awesome like yours? Maybe come away from thinking your final line art has to be such dead stylized lines. If you're not adding in these textures and quality and flow later on when you're rendering the piece and you're finishing the piece in lines, then you need to improve your lining, i.e. Um, get that sense of energy and dynamic back in to your inking phase by um, understanding the different ways to ink, hatch, cross hatch, uh, do flow lines, show the energy, because your sketches probably have a number of sketchy lines that kind of sweep and flow and build up the design that you're going for, but your final lines is just something in the middle, a kind of amalgam of all of it together, but just sits there a little bit flat. Learn what you can do with your inking equipment. Um, there's plenty of good online free inking guides about um, just kind of having dynamic inking, but also look at really dynamic pictures. Find a, a panel from a manga where it's like incredible fast moving combat action. And have a look at what they're doing with those line work, because you'll probably notice, um, especially the speedy, action-y moments in a lot of manga, as opposed to those single money shot full-page full spreads and stuff, probably have a lot of very rough, very choppy lines in there that contain a lot of energy and feeling. Um, we just kind of assume that all of our lines need to be super clean because that's how you kind of remember things. Um, but when you're kind of engaging with the manga and seeing the really good stuff, um, sometimes it's kind of like a really interesting, vibrant mess. So, dude, observe and uh, recreate. Observe and recreate and adapt and find out what works for you. Um, ever so willow, ooh, ever so willow, ooh, woo, which again, you know, it hurts me, but hello, says, I love you. Well, I love you too. Thank you so much. And Bubble Halo says, Mike, you're an absolute mad lad. You are too kind, good sir. Let me sip my tea one more time. Mm. Yeah, because that's what the mad lads do. They sit here at home and drink delicious tea. Mm, so wild. <clears throat> uh, Jamal Art says, hmm, something exists. Uh, Rule 34 artists, oh yeah. And Yannick Linson says, hi, Mikey, how are you doing? Hello there, Yannick. Uh, I'm not doing so well myself. I've got a very bad knee injury yesterday, but I'll live. Oh, I'm really, really sorry. How did you get it? What's going on? Uh, put your sweet knee up. Uh, keep it so that not too much blood's flowing to it and keep it cold. I think those are the rules. And uh, I have a very nice anime recommendation. It's called Food Wars. It's about a boy who can cook so well that he makes everyone who eats his food orgasm. I think you'll love it. <laughs> Greetings from the Netherlands. Hey, dude, how are you, man? Um, do you know what? I've heard of that one. And I heard something like this. You guys tell me if I'm right or wrong. <clears throat> Apparently, the manga car, the guy that was making Food Wars, had a big falling out with his editor and the manga was essentially unfinished, and the publishers or the editor had to get in a different artist to wrap up the story. So I'm actually a bit more... Now, obviously, the way you've described it sounds quite good, but I'm, I'm actually quite curious about what the story behind Food Wars is. This is another thing. Like, I love a good I love a good movie, but um, I really... I've, I care way less about movies than I did a couple years ago, like... They're either really good or they're not worth my time now. I'm very particular. So I'm really, really excited for the June remake with Denis Villeneuve and the amazing cast. I've done a live June trailer reaction on the Mega Mega 2 channel. It's all fantastic, but it keeps getting delayed. And the next James Bond movie I'd like to see, which has also been pushed back. Uh, and everything else I don't really pay attention to. Oh, no, wait. That's, that being said, I think the sequel, The Haunting of Eli Manor or Bly Manor is coming out really soon. I want to see that as well. Um, anyway, what I'm getting at is that um, uh, 
what kind of really interests me is not necessarily the films as much these days, but uh, the process behind a film. I'm fascinated by um, the story and uh, process that went behind the making of a film that turned out really badly, um, probably more than a film that turned out really well. Like, what happened on set? What were the decision-making things? That's why this last of um, the last of the Star Wars films is just so fascinating. The movies were terrible, or especially the last one, but, like, the whole story of how, you know, Disney panicked and blinked and tried to pander to the Star Wars fans and undo everything that happened in the second movie. That is fascinating to me, especially at that level with all that money behind it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what the story is behind Food Wars as much as actually in it. But thank you very much. Um, also, completely random, apparently I heard... Um, Oh, and by the way, the other thing that I'm really geeking out for is um, interesting facts surrounding video games, like all the clever thinking uh, and lateral thinking they had to do to fit uh, Resident Evil 2 from a CD onto the cartridge for the N64 port, and like how they desperately tried to save space and memory using all the cutscenes and clever things. It was amazing. Like, really fascinating stuff. There's a really good YouTube video somewhere about that. Anyway, um... Yeah, basically, thank you for the suggestion. Food Wars, got it. Uh, Bozy says, music suggestion, Infected Mushroom. Oh my god, dude, Infected Mushroom have been, a been around as long as I have. Man, I haven't listened to Infected Mushroom <laughs> since I was at university. Dude, that's like in what, 2005, 2006? Holy Infected Mushroom. Yeah, good suggestion, guys. Guys, remember, you can suggest anything to me. Obviously, I want to hear from you. Uh, some examples of some good video game waifus um, to source up some more fan arts and also enjoy and play the video game ideally because I'm gaming a lot. Um, but yeah, if you've got any anime, life, book, music suggestions, mate, get all up in my business. Get in the comment section. Let me know about it. Hmm. Holy moly. Uh, beep Beep Lettuce says, yo, hello there, good sir. I would love to see God of High School in your style. Well, I'll add it to the list. God of High School. That's obviously a combat one, right? <clears throat> And um, Jose Gordon says, Cuando traducurias tu canal al español? Uh, I'm afraid not at the moment, dude, but yes, I do want to get this all translated and available in Spanish and Hindi and all sorts of other languages to make it as approachable as possible. Give it time. Uh, Cameron James says, Good art, but it's also very cursed. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's absolutely right. And someone whose name, who I cannot uh, read, says, Oh! <laughs> Their name's in Cyrillic, and I was about to say that I can't read it. The very first thing they've written is, My name's Michael, so that you don't torture your tongue with those Russian letters. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. I hope you're doing well. Privyet! Uh, Mikey, have you played a game named Hellblade? Senua's Sacrifice. Oh, dude! This is on my to-do list. Um, I am very much looking forward to playing that game. I've heard nothing but interesting things um, from a number of people and some friend of mine who've like gone through some like uh, psychological stuff. Some friends of mine who've got um, some psychosis and stuff are saying that Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice does a lot of those things very, very well. It messes you up. You really get into it. I am looking forward to that game massively, but I'm just, I keep pushing it back because we've got other things going on. But no, great suggestion. You've just reminded me how important it is to put that on my list. You say that the game became your favourite of all times. The story tells us about a girl in Northern Europe during a Viking age and her boyfriend was killed. Uh, spoiler alert. So she decides to go into Viking hell to save him and resurrect him. Mm. During the whole story, you can't tell what's real and what isn't um, because there's mental illness of a main character. Yeah, this is why I hear. You're always going to hear voices in your head that guide or misguide you through the journey. Mm, it's about eight hours long, but you will remember those eight hours for the rest of your life, and the soundtrack is just a masterpiece. <gasps> thank you for your videos. They're always awesome and interesting to watch. Hey, thank you very much for saying, Michael. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying uh, rendering Tifa in the background. You can see how she's evolving during the course of today's episode. Dude, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been hearing about Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. And I hear they're making a sequel, and everyone who has recommended uh, the first game to me, this one... Um, I, so I don't know how the game ends or whatever, but everyone has said to me, like, I can't believe they're making a sequel. There is absolutely no need and no call for it whatsoever. Um, so that's super interesting to me because apparently the game, everyone who's played that first game does not want to see a sequel. They understand that the story is done and you've had everything you need. So we'll see what goes on. Uh, one sec, one more sip of tea. Hmm. 
Myo Art says, this is a copy and paste comment. Absolutely. Guys, if I've if I've not managed to read your comment, because, oh my goodness, a lot of you often get involved in the chat, and I bloody love you for it. Um, simply copy and paste it into the bottom of today's episode. With any luck, I will catch it next time around. Uh, anyway, so your copy and paste, Mayo, is, uh, Mikey, I'm a beginner artist, and I want to draw some etchy and hentai art. Firstly, I bloody hope you're over 18 before we continue this conversation. But I'm still in college, and things work differently in India. Oh my god. College age, India. Oh, just GPAs. Education statistics. How old are people in India who go to college? Basically, I don't want to be telling a 14-year-old it's time to start drawing tits and wang. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to have to keep my answer, like, very general and family safe. Uh, anyway, um, but I'm still in college and things work differently, so convincing my parents is an issue. I would like some help and opinions of yours, but I would love your art style and a way you do your workflow. Regards, my arts... Well, if you've still got to worry about your um, what your parents think and what you draw and stuff, then you're probably at that age when it's still a concern. So I would say build up almost all the skills surrounding it if you can. You can draw many a sexy woman without having to learn to draw, a, you know, bob and vagine all the time. So build up all your other skills. Work on how to compose a piece, work on your anatomy, work on your form, work on your perspective. Uh, you can just do straight middle of the road, crowd pleasing Jimmy Kimmel, nobody's going to demonetize you on YouTube fan art for as long as you like in that style. And then as long as you've nailed all of those bits, you can very late in the day when you're um, kind of in a position to do whatever you want and not worry about your parents' opinion, to then add in all the extra features that have otherwise been covered up previously. So um, yeah, don't hyper-focus uh, and just expand your repertoire and skills and just keep building it up. Uh, Zomboss Extrema says, hey Mikey, hello there zombies. Uh, it's my first time commenting. Well, hello there, good sir. And it's great to see you back on Anime Recommendations. Oh, it's great to see you back. And an anime recommendation I have is Rascal Doesn't Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Guys, can you see what I was saying at the beginning of tonight's episode? <laughs> can you see how, like, a lot of your suggestions seem to lean to one very particular um, quality uh, and aesthetic? Um, over the lockdown, I got most of my friends to watch anime, and we all watched Bunny, Bunny Girl Senpai. Everybody agreed that it was really good, uh, and then it has a movie, which is just as good as the anime, and it's also really nice to see you back, and I love your art. Sorry for the spelling and grammars. Hey, no worries, I can barely read, so don't worry about your spelling and stuff. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I will add that in. I'm going to at least give it a Google. Bunny Girl Senpai. Let's have a quick look. Bunny Girl Senpai movie. Images. Ooh. Oh. Oh, she li she literally wears a bunny girl outfit. Okay. Uh, she actually... Okay, she looks quite, quite adorable and quite cute. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll investigate. Maybe, maybe. It looks quite slice of life-y as well. Okay, thank you very much for the suggestion. And, um... Hey, Mikey, this is about the last DWM's question. It says, On la matrix... Uh, or in the Matrix 1. I recently got back on Dead Space 3 save file. TLDR, the replayability and customization. Dead Space 3 is the worst Dead Space out there and only worth it if it has a very generous discount. That's what I hear. You've heard my opinions about the audio team. Um, I kept coming back and what kept me going in was for gun building. Ah, building the strongest gun, but doing different loadouts and suits um, and making it more lore accurate added an additional level on top of the standard easy play, which actually made it fun and interesting. Mm, if you take more damage, you find less resources. Well, well, well. So, um, I love Stroke Hated the first one. It scared the shit out of me, but it was a good game. Um, I need to properly play the second one. I'm not playing it because it scared the shit out of me, so I'm a bit of a pussy. And, uh, yeah... There's a kind of thing where if I see a video game for the PS3 or PS4 for like um, less than three pounds in my second hand shop, I'll probably buy it just to kind of try it. So if I see Dead Space 3 for like pennies, I will pick it up. But other than that, we'll give it a skip. But my lovely, delicious friend, I've just checked the timer on the side. This brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for popping in all of your kind comments get your sweet selves in that comment section below let me know of some good recommendations just let me know how you're getting on guys it's just nice doing this again sorry for all of the uploads this week are still a little bit like i'm just fitting in the wednesday stuff um but other than that i'm gonna see you next week around have yourselves a bloody lovely one and take care